everyone. Welcome to Center for Student Opportunities webinar on First for College Partners. Uh, we're really excited for you all to be able to participate um, to give you our first demoing of the I'm First uh, website and the dashboard that you have access to as a college partner. Um, I'm joined today by our executive director, Matt Rubinoff. Um, who is tuning in remotely, and I will let him uh, kick it off with an introduction, and then we'll dive into demoing of the site. Thanks, Krista, and, and thanks, everyone, for uh, making some time from your busy schedules to, to join us. We're really excited uh, to uh, be doing this deeper dive uh, on the I'm First platform with you and, and show you what we've been uh, building uh, over the past year, really, uh, as we've been focused on, on, on rebranding and, and developing our new online presence and programs under the I'm First banner. Um, I think the genesis of I'm First uh, really goes back to uh, a lesson that, that, that I learned very clearly um, uh, over the past few years, and that is how important the, the peer influence is for motivating and encouraging first-generation students uh, to, get, to get to college. Uh, as much as, as we want to help um, as, as adults in, in our various capacities as, as college access providers or admissions counselors or teachers, uh, we, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it, it's really the, that near-peer influence that, that students are most resonating with. Um, and, and with that perspective uh, and also with uh, some inspiration from the It Gets Better campaign, uh, we conceived I'm First, um, and uh, a few months ago, Beta launched uh, the, the I'm First project, uh, which is what you see now if you go to imfirst.org. In a nutshell, uh, we are uh, collecting stories uh, from first-generation college graduates and students who will be uh, in an effort to put a face on who are first-generation college students and, and give them a voice and help provide some motivation, encouragement, uh, inspiration, uh, and even advice uh, to the next generation of students who are going to be first. Um, if you haven't visited already, uh, I, I implore you guys to, to log on uh, to imfirst.org and, and see what's going on uh, there. Um, uh, take the pledge. Uh, if you are a first-generation college graduate, graduate yourself or or just somebody who, uh, who, who cares about uh, this population, as we all do. Um, take a listen and look at, at, at some of the videos that have been submitted uh, so far. Unfortunately, uh, the GoToWebinar platform isn't going to allow us to play a video. Um, the audio wouldn't be transmitted to you guys uh, as, um, as the audience. Uh, so I'll let you guys uh, do that on your own time. Um, but, but, but as college partners, uh, I want to encourage uh, all of you to, to please help us populate the site with more stories uh, from your campus community, not just current uh, first gens uh, on your campus, but first generation college uh, faculty and staff, um, your alumni as well, uh, and help us really showcase the diversity of, uh, of who are uh, first generation college students. Um, you. Uh, you can have uh, your your subjects uh, wear proudly their um, their college sweatshirt or an I'm First T-shirt, uh, and not only share about their personal stories, but 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 give some some kudos to 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 your institution um, and 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 their experiences there um, and how your uh, your institution is is providing a supportive environment. Uh, for first-generation college students. Um, Krista is, is showing uh, the, the Share Your Story page uh, that has some good tips and instructions for creating the videos. Um, in a nutshell, we're interested in, uh, in, in, in the, the, the individual introducing themselves with the, with the, um, with the simple proclamation, uh, I'm Matt and I'm first, and then to go into a little bit of, uh, of, of their personal story and, and maybe leave uh, leave the viewer with a piece of advice or a lesson that they've learned along the way about making it to and through college. Uh, we, um, we encourage the videos to be at or under three minutes um, and uh, very much meant to be user-created videos, um, no need for high production value or polish or editing. 
um, the videos uh, can be posted to YouTube, and then that YouTube link is provided to us um, and we'll embed it on the site. Um, so as much as you guys can be helpful in sharing uh, this opportunity with, uh, with first generation students and staff and faculty and alumni from your campus community, we really appreciate it. Uh, some institutions have kind of taken to maybe cherry picking one or two uh, students that they want to make sure to, to profile. And I think that's a, a great strategy and maybe a good place to start. Um, but don't limit, uh, limit it to that. Um, we invite you to, to cast a wide net um, and, uh, and, and invite as many people who, who you think would identify with this project and want to contribute to it uh, to, uh, to participate and to share their stories. Uh, so that um, is, uh, is the I'm First project, uh, and we're really excited to, to start building this, this out. Um, obviously, from the student's perspective, you know, coming to a website to, uh, to, to watch videos and learn from, from, from stories is, is helpful and informative, and we hear from kids that they want to learn from, uh, from those who have, have come before them. But mo motivation to, to pursue college is, is just one piece of the puzzle. And because of that, we want to also help uh, aspiring first-generation college students navigate uh, the path to college and, and research and connect with colleges, uh, get answers uh, to, uh, to their questions about college. And that's what we've been building uh, around the I'm First dashboard that uh, Chris is going to uh, walk you guys through today. Um, we uh, were lucky enough to uh, recently win uh, the College Knowledge Challenge, a grant sponsored by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And that grant is helping us uh, further development of the I'm First uh, web application and, uh, and also to plan for a national launch uh, of I'm First in September. So I want to make clear that, that, that I'm First is, is, is still in beta, uh, it's still a beta site. Uh, while we are starting to roll it out in, in, in phases and invite new users to participate in both the storytelling project and the dashboard, um, it, it's being done very quietly. Um, we're doing little to no uh, marketing um, at this point uh, and, and really just outreaching through some of our, our closer channels and networks to uh, to begin inviting users, um, and obviously we have migrated uh, students over to I'm First from our uh, our old CSO College Center website as well. So there is a population building, um, but we're looking. Our sites are set on September uh, for really the national launch of I'm First, and we'll be in touch with you guys uh, leading up to then uh, to tell you how you guys and your institutions can support um, promotions uh, around that national launch. Um, but the role that you can help us play uh, over the next few months is certainly getting, getting more familiar with the I'm First dashboard and the college partner user experience, um, helping us to identify any bugs um, and, 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 and fix them, uh, as well as making suggestions or giving us ideas for, for ways that we can improve upon uh, what we've built so far. Um, so. Uh, with that said, um, we're going to try to address as many questions as we can uh, during this hour. Um, as you have a question, please type it into your, uh, to your questions box, um, and, uh, and we'll field those uh, towards the end of the presentation. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Krista, uh, who's going to walk uh, us through the, the I'm First dashboard uh, experience for college partners. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for the introduction, and thank you again, everyone, for being able to join us um, this afternoon. So uh, as Matt was explaining, the I'm First project that you see here is just one com component for students to be able um, to, to pursue college, to be encouraged to pursue college. Um, but to help them take the necessary steps they need to, to research and apply, and apply to college, we've you know, cr created the I'm First dashboard. And so as you can see, I'll be sharing my screen throughout uh, this webinar to demo for you. So you'll be able to uh, see where to access certain features of the site, how to log in, um, and then the dashboard itself. So I'm going to sign in uh, right now with a dummy account that we've created. 
Um, and you can do so by clicking to the bottom of imfirst.org and clicking on that sign-in button that I um, just did. And so if you give me a moment while I log in with our dummy account, And we also recommend that um, to make it accessible. Sorry. Sorry to interject. Um, I'm not sure if it's just me or if um, others are experiencing the same problem, but I, I'm not seeing um, your screen is kind of frozen on, on the, uh, the On First homepage. OK, let me see if I can correct that. Okay, is it visible? Great, I'm getting a few uh, responses saying yes, so thank you for that participation. Um, so as you can see, I am logged into the College Partner Dashboard that is viewable for you um, to access through your user account. And if you were a primary point of contact, um, for us, you were issued the, the user account. If you never received it or haven't set it up, um, or just need a further assistance with it, I'm, I'm happy to do so. Um, and you can just shoot me an individual email or contact me in any way, and I'm happy to get you set up with that. Um, so this is the I'm First dashboard visible to college partners. Um, there's a few different things to point to your attention to in this dashboard homepage. Um, the first point that I'm going to bring to your attention is this menu tab. And when I click down into the menu tab, it gives you a few different options for you to be able to not only manage your institution's profile, but also your personal preferences and your user account. And so these different features are quick access for you to view the dashboard, which is this main page that you see here, uh, view your institution's profile, uh, edit and update your institution's profile as you see fit in, in, in a convenient manner for yourself. Um, add and edit partner users. So if you have colleagues who will also be participating uh, with I'm First and will have access to editing your profile or utilizing our dashboard to be able to reach out to students or find organizations, um, you can add and edit your, your colleagues directly through this menu tab here. You also have access to edit your account, which just gives you your personal preferences, such as your name, uh, what your email address is, and your password. And then there's the sign out feature for you to be able to log out of I'm First. Moving over to back to the main dashboard, you could see visible um, a few numbers highlighted in orange uh, with profile views, organizations, and students interested. This um, is quick access to information. Uh, for you to be able to directly link to. So if you, the profile views give, gives you the number of um, students who have accessed your, your institution's page. And if you click on that, it will bring you directly to uh, your institution's page. And here you can see we have a, a dummy version uh, set up under AAA CSO University. Um, but this is what your home page would look like. Going back to the dashboard, the number you see here are the total number of community-based organizations, college access programs, and college prep uh, schools that we have within our organi or find organizations directory. Um, and if you click on that, it'll bring you directly to that search field directory. The students interested portion here are those students who have expressed interest in your institution and, and want to receive more information from you. So you'll see here under our dummy, dummy page, we have uh, two students who have potentially showed interest in our AAA CSO University out of the total number of students that we have registered under I'm First. And you're able to easily access the contact information of these students by clicking this export button. And as I mentioned before, that's going to give you a quick download of those students' information uh, to Excel for you to be able to utilize um, at your convenience. Moving down the home page, you see um, latest updates, messages, and saved items tabs on the left-hand side. 
This brings you, gives you access to the content river, which is similar to a newsfeed feature that you see on Facebook. So what you're seeing here with the 100 black men of Indianapolis Incorporated and Amherst College and Andrew uh, M. Uh, and then a few other I'm First uh, blog postings that you see. This is the news feed feature that many of you are familiar with on uh, Facebook. And so it's going to give you um, updates and quick access to your saved information. Messages. Um, is if you were to receive a message from a student reaching, reaching out to you, you have access to your, your message inbox uh, via your dashboard. Uh, saved items, as you move through the dashboard and as you'll see uh, as I move through the dashboard, you're able to save certain things that are of interest to you. And so this just gives you quick access to that information that you have saved. And then just for a heads up, clicking on the I'm First logo, uh, will bring you back to the main dashboard, to the home page. Okay, so as I mentioned, um, this dashboard gives you access to directly manage your institution's college profile. And so as you can see here with the dummy profile that we set up, this is what your uh, institution's profile will look like. Um, you're viewing this in terms of college partners right now. There is an I'm interested green button that's uh, located directly under more facts that students are able to see. And this is where they will be able to show interest in your institution and then have that information sent over to you. We've asked for, uh, I've sent over, and many of you may have received it, a, a checklist of information uh, for what we ask for in our, for these profiles. Uh, I'll pull it up briefly, uh, real quick right here. But if you haven't received it or would like to receive it again, uh, I'm happy to forward it along to you. Um, and we just created this checklist for you to be able to better collect the information that we're asking for um, that's contained within these profiles. So as you, you move forward to build out these profiles, you can have all of the relevant information and re really utilize um, all the features uh, that we ask for. You're able to post a few pictures of your institution. It allows for four to be visible on your profile. And then the fast facts uh, portion is the percentages that you see located here in orange. This will be further uh, information that our students are able to quickly access, such as you know, the affordability of your institution, uh, the success rates, your admissions criteria, relevant application deadlines if there's any fees and then further contact information of your school. These school links are directly linked to your institution's website, and you're able to add them as you build out your profile. Another piece of information to point out, if you click on the location contained within your institution's profile, here we're, we're in Bethesda, Maryland, is where our nonprofit uh, Headquarters is when you click on it, it'll bring you it'll bring that student up to Google Maps so that they'll be able to access your uh, address of your admissions office. So then I'm going to bring you back to the dashboard, and I'm going to dive into the uh, the databases and the directories that we have. So first, I'm going to start with the the Find Students database, and it's located. Yes. Chris, to start to interrupt, do you want to show um, quickly uh, where colleges can go to edit and update their profile? Sure. So going back to the main dashboard under this menu tab, if you click on edit and update your profile, it'll bring you to this page. And then use, utilizing the checklist that I'm happy to forward out again, you'll be able to uh, edit the basic information update your institution's logo, set fields of, of study that you, your uh, institution offers, provide the relevant contact information, such as your admissions office address, that links directly to that Google map for students to be able to access, the phone numbers, your institution's URLs that will give students direct links to your institution's page, We have a student quote feature that we're working to incorporate shortly. 
And you can highlight one of your first-gen students uh, on your web page here. And then the relevant demographic and fast facts and information, such as student diversity, the student success, affordability, and your admissions. There's one um, key feature to note here. It's this Programs tab. This is where you're going to want to highlight all of those opportunities your institution provides for serving first-generation students. Um, and this is what we really want to point our first-gen students to when they're, reaching, when they're researching for these schools, because we want them to know the opportunities that's gonna, that your institution is going to provide them for not only being a best fit, but for also helping them be successful for graduation. And so here I have a few dummy categories of what programs uh, could be, such as academic advising and support, uh, pre-college prep and outreach, scholarship and financial aid, first-year experience in transition and tutoring and mentoring programs. And so these will be of importance um, because we're really directing our students to pay attention to these opportunities that's, off that's offered for them so that they can make the best informed decision for themselves. Okay, so then moving back to the main dashboard, I'll go back to the uh, dummy profile that we have just so you could again see uh, what those edited fields, how that looks. And then here you have the program supporting first generation college students that are expandable with more uh, detailed information and then they link to your institution's web page of where you might find scholarship financial aid. I did set up a, a test link to our uh, scholarship that CSO provides simply by clicking more, learn more about scholarship and financial aid here. And it'll, that would link directly to your institution's scholarship or financial aid page. Again, I just click on the I'm First logo and it brings me back to the dashboard. Okay, so moving forward with the uh, Find Students database, alongside the exported interested students feature that we have, um, we really want to encourage our college partners to not just wait for students to approach them, but to really utilize our dashboard to reach and search and contact our motivated first-gen students that we have contained uh, within I'm First. So the students database that you see gives you access for, for, for full partners. It gives our full partners access to search for all of the registered I'm First users that we have. And what you can do is you can set some search criteria that you see here on the left-hand side, such as a graduation year, uh, where these students live, which, which state they live, if you're interested in searching by race and ethnicity. Uh, if you're an all-female institution and you want to just uh, simply reach out to just females, we could filter that search by female or male. Uh, we have other search criteria, such as academic areas of interest. And then if you click down on academic information, you can set criteria for what that student received on their SAT or ACT score, their high school GPA. And I'll pull up a dummy student profile so here you can see our, our uh, what a full student profile would look like for you uh, here we have Annie G who lives in Santa Monica California and you can see that she is able to fill out relevant information such as the extracurriculars and activities she participates in in high school, uh, any relevant work experience, honors and awards she received, her academic areas of interest, and then you're provided contact information, the student's home address. You're also provided a phone number, which we don't have visible here, their birth date, and we ask for their uh, annual household income to get a little bit more of, of an idea of the student's demographic. On the right-hand side, you can see the high school that they, they are attending, their graduation year, what their class rank is, and then other relevant uh, SAT and ACT scores. 
If you're interested in a student, after viewing their profile, you can save them by clicking this button, Save. Or you can directly message them through the I'm First dashboard by clicking that Send Message. And once you are finished typing in your message and you send it to that student, uh, they'll become notified that they have a message. For right now, those students will see messages when they log in. Um, they will have an inbox along with updated items and saved items. And then we're working on integrating uh, new messaging systems to generate email notifications to users. So that will become available. Chris, I also want to point out there that um, students will not be able to initiate messaging contact to college partners. Um, they'll be able to reply to, uh, to messages that a college uh, might send them, um, but the college needs to initiate the communication. We uh, know how consumed you guys already are and don't want to open the floodgates. So the, the student's call to action, uh, if they're interested in your school, is simply by clicking that I'm interested button uh, on, uh, on, on your profile page and that will, that will notify you guys of their interest and from there you can either export their, uh, their data um, and or uh, look, look them up and message them through the I'm First dashboard. Thanks, Matt. Um, I had one question that asked how to redemonstrate to get to the Find Student Database. Um, it's simply by clicking on the Students tab that you see highlighted in blue. And that'll bring you back down to the search engine of the Student Database. Again, just by clicking the I'm First link, Krista. it'll... Krista, let's also point out regarding the, the student database that um, what, you'll, what you'll find there right now is, is, is kind of bare bones in terms of the student data. Um, we've, we've migrated a, a most of these students over from uh, our previous CSO College Center website. Uh, and are asking them, inviting them to build out their more comprehensive I'm First profile. Um, so right now, many of the, the student profiles you see are lacking a, an avatar and uh, a lot of detail and depth that you see on, on the example profile uh, right now. Uh, but, but over the, the next few months and as we start rolling out I'm First in a bigger way, uh, you will, uh, you'll, you'll see um, the more comprehensive profile uh, um, uh, as we have an example of in front of you. Um, so don't get discouraged uh, if you're doing some searching now uh, by the lack of, um, uh, I guess, robust uh, profiles. Um, those students are, are slowly kind of mo moving over time first and updating and adding to their profile. And then new users certainly are completing their profiles more thoroughly as well. Great. Thanks, Matt. Okay, so for the interest of time, I'm going to um, continue to walk through the dashboard. Um, again, just by clicking on the M First logo, it'll bring you back to the main dashboard page. And then to access the Find Organizations directory, simply by clicking the blue tab, ORGS, Orgs, it'll bring you to the search database. And so over the years, we learned that our college partners building relationships with community-based organizations and college access programs and other youth-serving organizations is, you know, increasingly becoming a best practice. And so we're really excited to be able to move this national directory that we've been building out for the past few years um, over to I'm First, um, over to the I'm First dashboard uh, for our full partners to be able to uh, really utilize um, and enhance in not only the recruitment efforts, but just in overall being able to reach out to more students via these organizations. Uh, especially those students who otherwise aren't really being supported in the pursuit of college, um, you know, by their high schools or, of course, uh, by home. So the Find Organizations directory is similar uh, in function to the Find Students database that we uh, just viewed. Uh, you're able to set criteria 
for where you want these uh, to find these organizations by state. Uh, the program type that they are, the populations that they serve, the time of day that they provide programs or that they're functioning for students, and then other relevant program services. And so if I pull up um, using the search criteria, a uh, built out profile, I'll be able to show you the information that is presented to you. And so here I searched for Act 6 Leadership and Scholarship Initiative. Uh, this is an organization that was able to build out um, a very comprehensive profile. So for the interest of showing you what's available, um, we'll look at Act 6 Leadership page. Um, and as Matt made mention to uh, the students, Profiles. Um, most organizations are have just provided their basic information for you, and so at this point we are asking them to add to it to really build it out and make it as comprehensive as you see here. Um, and so we're reaching out to the different organizations contained within our database um, and growing the database even further to move beyond just the basic information provided. But as you see here, when you look up for a community-based organization or a college access program or other youth-serving uh, organizations, um, you're given a full description of what the organization is and the services that they provide. And if you scroll down... So, Krista, the, um, yeah, even the basic uh, um, data that is, that is in the directory for every organization at this point uh, it is helpful. Um, it includes uh, both the location of the uh, the program, as well as a link to their website, uh, a phone number to um, their office, as well as uh, at least one, in some cases two, points of contact uh, for the organization and the ability to email them directly uh, from the platform. So as you guys are, are planning uh, uh, spring travel or looking towards the fall, I uh, definitely encourage um, you to utilize the, uh, the org database and include some community-based organizations, college access programs, and, and, and college prep-focused charter schools uh, in, your, in your visits um, and, and uh, uh, identify um, maybe some through, uh, through this platform. Great. And so uh, what Matt just made mention to in terms of direct access to the organization's website, their phone number, um, as well as other contact information, um, is what you're able to see as I scroll down to the bottom of the page here. Um, so if you click on the website link, it'll direct you to their page. You have the opportunity to save the organization. Again, those saved items will be under your uh, home page on your On First dashboard. And then you can also share this page uh, via social media. The sharing feature is also added onto your institution's profile for students to be able to utilize. Uh, so they also have access to sharing your institution's profile these, through these social networking streams as well. And here you can see there are two point of contacts. If you click on contact, this gray box underneath their names, it'll bring you to directly email them. And right now my computer uh, is not linked. I'm under the dummy page to do so. Uh, but it would pop, on, pop up under my main emailing, uh, which in this case would be Gmail, so that I can directly contact that person. And it's also uh, important to note that our organizations directory. It's a proprietary database. And so um, while for the students, their contact information is available for download, uh, this won't necessarily hold true for our find organizations uh, directory. Uh, because we want to encourage you to log in frequently, uh, especially as you plan your, your travels for recruitment, to research these organizations and make contact with them. Uh, you know, we're always available to help uh, with initiate these contacts, um, and if you're having difficulty communicating to, you know, to help further uh, push that along. Um, but 
it is proprietary, so um, you'll be able to save the organizations, but you won't necessarily be able to download them into Excel as you are similar, uh, able to do with the fine students. I'd be interested in, in feedback from college partners on that. Uh, it's certainly a topic we're discussing uh, in the office. Um, we, w we want this to be a, a valuable and useful tool for you guys. Um, at the same time, you know, uh, understanding and respecting that it is a proprietary database. Uh, potentially, you know, the 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 uh, the common ground might be that uh, we do implement an export feature of saved CBOs, um, but I don't anticipate that we will ever allow for the entire directory to be uh, downloaded or exported in its entirety. Great, and so um, quickly before we move into questions in the interest of time, uh, I wanted to just call to your attention two more tabs that you have uh, access to here as college partners. This would be the question and answer tab and then the blog tab. Uh, this Q&A tab, when you click on it, this is where uh, students are given access to post questions on a number of topics. Um, that they have questions to. And so, as you can see here on the left-hand side, we have a few categories that questions are, are able to be assigned to uh, for you as college partners to search for. Um, you can also type in keywords in this box, search for, to be able to pull up questions. And we really encourage you as, as college partners to, you know, log on and, and check out what students are asking and, uh, you know, see them as as they move through the application process or as they're uh, coming close to trying to make a decision about uh, where, to, where to attend uh, college, where they got accepted to. Here at staff, you know, we're always monitoring this and, and answering them, but we really want our college partners to be active participants uh, in this as well as we connect with and provide resources to students. Again, for questions, you're able to save them. You can also flag them if you see one that is inappropriate. And then if you just click on a question, I'll click on um, the second one here, Asked by Chelsea. This is where you're able to respond to submit your answer. Matt, do you have any more to add about the Q&A form before I move on to the blog? Um, no, just that this is going to be kind of a community-moderated uh, Q&A forum. Obviously, uh, students are going to be driving it and hopefully answering and responding to each other's uh, questions as well as our supporter users, uh, the counselors, mentors, teachers, and parents who are also able to create accounts on the dashboard. Obviously, we'd uh, invite and encourage our, our college partners to engage in the forum as well um, as, as you want to contribute to it. Um, we anticipate that you know, the questions are going to be more, uh, more geared towards kind of college planning and, and the college application process, um, more so than questions about specific institutions. Um, but if we see that happening, uh, we'll, we'll definitely uh, loop you guys in um, as uh, there might be an opportunity to respond uh, to a student's question specific to your institution. Thanks, Matt. And so moving on to the last tab that you have access to is uh, the student blog section of first. And we're, we're really excited about this because um, the current bloggers that we have are CSO scholarship winners. Um, our scholarship winners have the unique privilege to serve as student bloggers on them first. And they've been really, um, it's been really interesting to see them, you know, share their college experience and then offer more advice um, to inspire the next cohort first generation students that we're serving. Currently, we have 34 student bloggers. Um, and I believe many of you should have received my email men mentioning the scholarship that CSO offers. Um, it has opened up 
I'm happy to provide a little bit more information to you uh, in a follow-up email if you missed uh, my original email or if you just have further questions about it. But we do highlight uh, students uh, being blogged as well as in our Opportunity Knocks newsletter that uh, you as an in, that full partners as an in, as a, a partner of, of CSO is, is featured in that we send out month, monthly. And on the right hand side just gives you a, a stream of recent posts as well as comments to the blog and then other relevant categories. that further organize the blogging posts. So we encourage you as college partners to see what these students are, are talking about and to uh, track their experience like we've been doing, um, especially as they're able to blog for us throughout their college experience, so for four years. Christy, you want to click into one of the blog posts um, just so we can see uh you know, a student's face and their name. That's one kind of improvement we're going to make to that blog homepage is, is adding the byline and the photo um, on that page so uh, they're more readily uh, viewable. Um, but uh, the individual posts have the, the student's name, their institution, and their hometown clearly uh, marked. Um, and uh, in a lot of ways, um, this uh, this blog and has inspired the, the larger I'm First project. Um, when we first built our CSO College Center website, uh, it was mo very much focused on being an informational clearinghouse and a college search tool. Uh, but a few years into it, we started our scholarship and implemented the the blog. And very quickly, that's where all the attention was going to. When kids came to our website, they wanted to log on to that blog and, and read the posts of, uh, of, of first generation college students who they could personally identify with and relate to and to learn from their experiences and, and, and that demonstration of kind of the power of the peer influence in a lot of ways um, gave birth to uh, to the idea of the I'm First project and, and, and the larger storytelling initiative. Um, so we will be continuing the blog uh, as as uh, and the scholarship, as as Krista mentioned, the scholarship application is is open right now. The deadline to apply is May twenty fourth. So we encourage our college partners uh, to share that scholarship opportunity with your incoming first generation college students. Um, the two prerequisites of the scholarship are one that you are a first generation college student, and two that you're attending a CSO partner institution. Um, so uh, um, please help us uh, share uh, this opportunity with qualified candidates, and it would be awesome to, uh, you know, to for your school to know that you have uh, a student blogger um, uh, as one of your own. Absolutely. And as you can see in that example, uh, students were able to embed uh, videos. So that's another cool feature, bringing you to another uh, student blogger listing out a bunch of advice and, and tips for students. So there's a lot of different ways that um, our students, are, our bloggers are able to communicate the information and then for our students to obtain it. And before I move into um, answering any questions that you may have, I, I just want to direct your attention back to the dashboard over to the right hand side. As Matt mentioned, uh, with information on the scholarship, um, you'll be able to access that relevant information here. Uh, we'll also be giving you links to um, be able to share your story. So the community of videos and messages of encouragement that we spoke of in the beginning of the webinar, uh, this will give you access to doing so. And then future best practice webinars that will be issuing our, we'll be hosting um, throughout the year. You'll be able to have archives of that. And then as well as uh, Opportunity Knox newsletters that we've sent out um, will also be archived for you to access here. And so Matt, if you don't have anything more to add, um, I'm going to open it up for questions.
to our college partners. Um, some of you have already been submitting a few questions, and you can do so in that questions box. Yeah, let's get through a few questions. Great. And so um, a few questions uh, that I've been seeing are, how are we making high school students aware of I'm First um, and getting them to provide uh, their profile information? Um, that's a great question, and that's a question that many college partners have been asking. Um, as Matt made note uh, to mention that, you know, our national launch um, is going to be this September. Uh, and for a while, the, the sign-in access or signing up access for students was not available, but we just made this available. Um, and so we're really excited for students to be able to now come on to I'm First um, to sign up and create a user account. Um, we reach out to many community-based organizations, college access programs, and high schools, uh, specifically high school advisors. Uh, we try to utilize these CBOs, uh, the college access programs, and, and um, the advisors that we formulate relationships with uh, as uh, the main point to disseminate this information to reach students. So we've just begun those recruitment efforts, and my colleague, her name is Chelsea, uh, as I've mentioned to you, to some of you in, in conversations, uh, she serves at me, she serves like me for college partners, but on the student side of things. Uh, so she provides all of the support, uh, initiates those form formulating relationships and, and reaching out uh, to students um, to act to, to get them interested and to utilize us as a source. Um, as I mentioned, we do have the Opportunity Knox newsletter um, that does get distributed out to over 40,000 uh, high school counselors, high school students, uh, community-based organizations, and college access programs uh, across the U.S. So they are receiving uh, this information um, as well as the signing up uh, opportunity uh, via our Opportunity Knox newsletter, as well as our other uh, own personal individual grassroots uh, level type efforts of us personally contacting, um, setting up meetings, um, and whatever uh, of, is of interest to these organizations, high school counselors, uh, and other youth-based uh, programs that uh, we contact. Yeah, I would just uh, kind of reiterate that, um, you know, over the next couple months, uh, you know, the, the audience on I'm First is going to be intentionally small. We're not doing any heavy, heavy marketing and outreach or, or PR, um, but we are starting to, to, to invite new users to sign up and, and kind of be our beta testers in, in some ways um, you know, through our, our, our channels of, uh, of CBOs, schools, uh, and elsewhere. Um, we, we will be launching in a bigger way in September uh, hopefully with some, some significant uh, PR and media muscle behind it. Help us really launch the I'm First campaign um, and, and build traffic to the I'm First dashboard as well. Uh, we've set an ambitious um, yet realistic uh, goal, I think, of, of engaging 50,000 students um, uh, by, 20, or in, in, uh, by the end of 2014. Um, we, uh, um, we, we, we know that the students are out there. Um, there's roughly 30% of, of currently enrolled uh, post students in post-secondary institutions are first-generation college. That equates to about 4.5 million students nationwide. So, uh, you know, even, you know, population potentially even larger uh, than that uh, of students who haven't yet made it to college. Um, so we're, we're excited for what's to come uh, in terms of student engagement. The Gates grant is, is going to be a, a huge leg up in, uh, in, in, in just raising public awareness and participation uh, in this initiative, um, especially for uh, a small nonprofit with limited capacity like ours. Um, and uh, what else was I going to say? Oh, you know, traditionally our, our strategy, as, as Krista has mentioned, has been to kind of uh, work through those who are on the front lines with these students, um, the counselors, the college access providers. And while we've built a, a pretty robust uh, email network, about 40,000 of these folks subscribe to our email newsletters, and we'll continue to work through those channels, more and more we're figuring out ways to kind of meet students where they are. Um, and where they are is largely on social media. 
Um, Facebook and Twitter have become a, a much more significant presence for us um, and uh, will continue to be a way that we, that we bring people, uh, students especially, um, into, into the mix. Um, and on top of that, we, uh, we also are a Google grantee, meaning we have uh, free advertising on Google, which, as you know, is a tremendously powerful tool. And with do, without doing very much, um, we are, our Google is driving a lot of people to our site, uh, students who are searching for things like scholarships or first-generation uh, keywords. Um, so uh, those are, are various ways that we are and will be continuing to reach students and, and building out our, um, uh, our, our network. Thanks, Matt. And uh, furthermore, regarding uh, getting students signed up, we had another question that uh, was asked, uh, are students able to restrict their information from being accessed by partners? Um, put another way, have students been able to elect to receive contact from colleges? And so I wanted to uh, make it visible uh, to you all what this sign up feature does look like. Uh, so when students do sign up, they are electing to, to have access to the dashboard and they are electing to be contacted uh, from our college partners. Um, as Matt mentioned before, um, uh, as Matt made uh, note of before when we were going over the, the profiles of uh, the students, uh, they put in the information that uh, they want to put in. So uh, there are fields that could be left blank. Uh, we are encouraging students to build out a more comprehensive profile, um, but if they don't want to indicate, for example, what their household income is, they, they uh, do not need to necessarily do so. Um, Matt, do you have any further to add about what this means for students when they're signing up? No, um, you know, their, their information is certainly privacy protected, um, but in, in signing up they are uh, giving permission to uh, to us to share that information with uh, college partners exclusively. Um, so, uh, you know, other beyond that, um, they they don't have a, a public profile with with any confidential information, or or um, and we're not sharing it uh, elsewhere. Great. Um, so we have about uh, four minutes left. Um, I'll answer one more question before we move on to conclude. Uh, just to let you all know that this webinar, this webinar has been recorded, so I'll be sure to send out uh, the recorded version for you to view again or share with colleagues who were unable to join us. Um, and in the interest of time, the last question that we have is how many hits per day or week is the site currently receiving? Um, I don't have per week per day, but on, on monthly average, we have about 15,000 hits to the website. Um, as we've been continuing to uh, continuously mentioning with the grant received from the College Knowledge Challenge through the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, we're anticipating our reach to grow because we're going to really be able to utilize that social network moving forward. Um, as you can see, students could uh, sign up using Facebook, and so that's going to be features that we're, we're working on now uh, on continuously incorporating uh, to utilize that. So we're excited to see what those statistics will be, what those hits will be. Um, and you as uh, college partners are able to to see via your dashboard, as I made note of uh, earlier in the webinar, how many views your institution specifically, how many views your institution's profile is specifically receiving. So you'll have access to that information um, that's of relevance to you via your dashboard. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to submit them, um, or you could email me or uh, give me a call, and we're happy to. Um, answer any further questions you may have or, or uh, clarify the dashboard and, and the, its usage further. Thanks, Krista. Yeah, um, Krista's your first line of support uh, as you have questions or, or maybe want to set up a separate time uh, to talk further one-on-one um, -on -one, uh, about your institution's partnership and, and utilization of I'm First. Um, there's also a, a feedback button um, when you're signed into the, the I'm First dashboard uh, that you're welcome to utilize as well um, as, as you might run into a bug or have a question, uh, I invite you to, to utilize that, that feedback button. Um, thanks again, everybody, for joining us. I, I wanted to conclude um, by pointing out 
uh, a few other ways that, that you guys are, are able to um, make the most of your partnership. Uh, we are publishing the next edition of our college guidebook in September. It's going to be rebranded under the I'm First name. Uh, and so over the, the summer months, uh, you guys should expect to hear from us about making updates uh, to your profile uh, before our print deadline. Uh, we're going to be continuing our series of best practices webinars. Um, this spring, we haven't scheduled it yet, but we're hoping to bring you a webinar looking at uh, multicultural uh, fly-in and visit programs uh, and uh, inviting a panel uh, of our college partners who have model programs in those areas uh, to present on what they're doing uh, and to share um, their, uh, their, their good work and successes with our community. Um, if there are specific topics that you guys are interested in learning more about or a program uh, that you guys feel like you're doing something special or, or innovative and, and want to share it with our community of college partners, um, please let us know. We're kind of uh, developing an editorial calendar for our best practices webinar series uh, over the next year and would love uh, your input there. Um, we're also looking at ways to, to, to build out this learning community uh, for and among our community of college partners. We're looking at uh, possible listservs and interest groups. Uh, we're going to want to publish white papers um, uh, on the topics that we address in our best practices webinars, uh, all intended to further engage and connect uh, our, our community of college partners and, and to promote and strengthen best practices. Um, if you guys have uh, advice or ideas for how best we could um, implement uh, an effective listserv or interest groups uh, type of platform. Uh, we'd love that input. We know that you know sometimes those things can get unwieldy and we, we don't want that by any means. Um, I'll also point out that a number of the, uh, the things that, that we shared with you today on the I'm First dashboard are our full partner uh, benefits and services. Um, so if you're an associate partner but you're intrigued by what you saw with the, uh, the student database and the CBO directory, um, those are full partner services and we'd be happy to talk with you about upgrading to the full partnership status so you can have access to them. Um, as I mentioned, we're working very closely with the College Knowledge Challenge uh, over the next few months to continue development on the I'm First uh, web app, uh, some areas of, of improvement uh, which you should expect to see uh, between now and, and national launch in September uh, include really improving our capabilities through Facebook. Facebook is another sponsor of this grant and so we're looking at how we can better leverage the social network uh, to proliferate the app, uh, making it easier for student users especially to like pages and share pages and comment on pages and have that activity post to their Facebook uh, news feed um, so that it catches the attention of their friends and, and it draws their friends uh, into the website. And we're looking at other ways uh, to improve upon uh, the user interface and the user experience uh, uh, specifically as it, as it regards to uh, engaging uh, the student user. Um, so we're really excited uh, to give you kind of this, this peek at I'm First and, and, and have you uh, begin using the dashboard side um, as a college partner. Uh, we'll, we'll be keeping you posted and updated as, uh, as things progress um, and, and we have our sights set on that uh, national launch in September. Um, with that, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll call it um, a webinar. I want to uh, you know, thank you again and drive home that it, it's, it's, it's partnerships with, with institutions like yours that, that make our work possible. So we thank you for your continued partnership. Um, you should have, in the past few weeks, received information about uh, renewing the, par the partnership for 2013-14. And Krista will be following up by email uh, regarding that as well. Uh, but if you have any questions uh, as, a, as a concerns partnership renewal, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, thanks again for your time. I hope you found this informative. And we look forward to staying in touch. 
Thanks, Matt, and thank you all again. And please feel free uh, to contact me uh, should you need anything further. Uh, enjoy the rest of your days.